Leaked documents, China and Russia strike a deal on weapon supply. China jails internet freedom blogger for seven years. Chinese officials suggest Beijing issue early marriage and childbearing policies. Chinese experts discuss building houses on the moon, causing lively discussions. Famous Chinese blogger says PCR testing conducted in Hainan is the next pandemic wave coming. A top secret document shows that U.S. intelligence has found quite credible information that China has agreed to supply Russia weapons. The Washington Post on April 13th reported that among the leaked Pentagon documents is a report with a subhead that reads, Beijing reportedly approves covert shipments of lethal aid to Russia. A U.S. spy tap overheard from Russia's Foreign Intelligence Service, SVR, that China has agreed to deliver the Russian army weapons. It planned to do it incrementally and wished to keep the process veiled by camouflaging the items as civilian goods. The report belongs to the Office of the Director of National Intelligence and is marked top secret with a limited distribution range. It further confirms recent allegations from U.S. officials that China was on the verge of supplying Russia with weapons but has not done so. Two anonymous senior officials told the Washington Post that there is yet evidence that China has already shipped lethal assistance to Russia. One of them said, we remain concerned and are continuing to monitor closely. CNN previously reported that one entry of the Pentagon documents that China might use Ukraine's attacks on places far inside Russia to legitimate its aid to Russia by scapegoating NATO for being the attacker. The documents read, China would respond more strongly and more likely increase the scale and scope of material it is willing to provide Russia if Ukrainian strikes hit a location of high strategic value or appear to target senior Russian leaders. The report is dated February 23rd, one day after the anniversary of the Ukraine war, when China proposed its controversial 12-point peace plan. Western officials have cast doubts about it, which is vague in language, and failed to address problems such as Russia's withdrawal of troops, reparations, and prosecutions. Blogger Ruan Xiaohuan, named a critic of China because of his blog, Program Think, was arrested in May 2021. The news reported by VOA on April 14th circulated online. VOA reports that a closed court in Shanghai convicted him of inciting subversion and sentenced Ruan to seven years in prison. Ruan evaded capture for 12 years and posted hundreds of critiques of the Chinese Communist Party, CCP. He also advises readers to hide their digital footprints and bypass the Great Firewall of China. Yachui Wang, a researcher with Human Rights Watch, he is a legend. He is famous among Chinese internet users who care about internet freedom. The verdict said that between 2009 and 2021, Ruan composed over 100 sedacious essays of rumors and libel, which involved attacking and smearing the current political system of our country, inciting subversion of state power, and attempting to overthrow the socialist system. The court said Ruan's crimes were grave, but did not mention his blog or specific articles. Anjali Dot, who studies China at the free speech group PEN America, said the omission was likely intentional. Dot said, the more that they drew attention to him or the blog, there's absolutely no reason that people would believe that he's a criminal and that he incited subversion of state power. The Chinese embassy in Washington did not respond to VOA's request for comment. Cedric Alviani is the head of the East Asia office of the organization that oversees Reporters Without Borders. He said seven years is a very heavy sentence, even for a national security crime. However, Ruan's wife, Bei, said she didn't know about Ruan's online identity until police arrived at their apartment in Shanghai to arrest her husband. Bei said as he was escorted out of the sentencing room, he kept looking back at her. At that moment, she decided she had to be strong. She said, I am the only one who can save him. Bei is appealing her husband's case, hoping he might get his freedom back soon. In 2013, when Ruan Xiaohuan's program Think Blog was nominated for the Best Chinese Blog in the Joich Well Best Blog Award, he wrote, You may not care about politics, but politics will follow you. As the paper reported on April 11th, members of the Chinese People's Political Consultative Conference proposed that the Chinese Communist Party, CCP, should issue early marriage and childbearing encouragement policies. As a result, all Chinese provinces have deleted the clauses on late marriage and late childbearing. According to the National Bureau of Statistics of China, in 2017, the average age of Chinese women's first marriage was 25.7 and the average age of the first childbearing was 26.8. Both figures were well beyond the legal marriage age and are currently rising. Financial burdens, childcare burdens, and career development anxiety have become major factors limiting childbearing. 
The article pointed out that the China's National Health Commission recently published the official dispatch called Respond to the Relevant Content of the Guiding Options on Further Improving and Implementing Active Fertility Support Measures, which the Weibo account Da Piaoliang Shashi summarized that, in conclusion, the commission suggested we all give birth early. And Edison said, they talked a lot, but the main problem remains unresolved. The article stated that Chinese people's wages are equal to the level of poverty alleviation, just enough to feed themselves. Adding more members may make it difficult for their livelihood to be maintained. Therefore, can they think of having children? The article pointed out that, in the end, the surface settlement has no practical meaning. The National Health Commission provides no money, no financial allocation, no stable employment, no housing solution, and sits there fantasizing. The CCP has been struggling with population growth in recent years. Some Chinese experts even suggested the marriage age should be reduced to 18 years, causing the public to react, can an 18-year-old be able to raise a family? In this regard, news commentator Fang Yuan told RFA, they're really shameless, treating people as a tool for country management and using the human mind concept to exploit human labor. The CCP ignores a host of problems. They arbitrarily reduce the woman's marriage age just to pursue the population number. This is very evil. China's first academic conference on extraterrestrial construction was recently held in Wuhan. Many experts and scholars discussed the topic, how to build houses on the moon, sparking heated discussions among the public. Some netizens complained China is facing many housing problems, such as high housing prices, mortgages, and unfinished buildings. One criticized, you guys can't even build a house on the ground, let alone build in the sky. As reported by NetEase, the conference focused on the extraterrestrial construction theme, exploring methods and issues related to housing construction on the moon. Ding Leiyun, the conference initiator and a Chinese Academy of Engineering member, said the research team consulted the traditional Chinese construction method, mortise and tenon joint, combined with the 3D printing construction method and using lunar soil for baking moon bricks with tenon texture. Robots that can build houses, just like playing Lego. However, Ding Leiyun pointed out that this plan is incredibly challenging due to the moon's harsh environment, its vacuum environment, and extreme temperature variations, ranging from about negative 180 degrees Celsius at night to over 100 degrees Celsius during the day, make it almost impossible to carry out standard civil engineering methods and ensure the construction's structural stability. Yu Dongyun, a scholar of the Chinese Academy of Sciences and the chief designer of Phase 4 of the Chinese Lunar Exploration Program, stated house construction on the moon is a critical aspect of long-term lunar exploration. This issue must be addressed in the future, but based on the current research, it can only take 20 to 30 years or even longer to realize the building houses on the moon goal. After the comments regarding house construction on the moon, heated discussions have been sparked among Chinese netizens. The related topics have also become hot searches on the Chinese internet. Many Chinese netizens criticized the Chinese regime for its inability to solve domestic housing problems, such as high housing prices, mortgages, and unfinished buildings. They even dared to call on building houses on the moon. Another mocked, to build a building, they will firstly focus on building a parking lot to collect some fees, while not yet finishing a part of the building. A famous Chinese blogger recently posted on the internet saying when he arrived in Haikou City, Hainan Province, to participate in the Third China International Consumer Products Expo, he was asked to take a PCR test at the airport. The Third China International Consumer Products Expo, or Hainan Expo, is China's first national-level exhibition with the theme of consumer products. It is also the largest consumer products exhibition in the Asia-Pacific region. On April 9th, Weibo blogger Kaji posted, The reason for the nucleic acid testing in Haikou is due to the foreign guests participating in the expo, and they will all be tested. On April 10th, Kaji posted, Yesterday some people questioned about the nucleic acid testing at Haikou Airport. I was told to do the test when I got to the media reception. There was no need to lie. I just want to clarify. He also attached his PCR test results under the post. Under his post, an Edison commented, Brother, don't you know how sensitive the nucleic acid testing topic is? Another person said, My classmate tested positive for COVID two days ago and is still in the hospital. Sing Tao Daily revealed that during the Chinese Communist Party CCP's two sessions held in March this year, journalists were also required to take PCR tests and were quarantined for 24 hours before the meeting. Zhang Wenhong, director of the Infectious Diseases Department in Huashan Hospital of Fudan University, previously publicly stated there will be a second wave of infection peaking between May and June this year, and the infection rate will be between 25% and 50%.